Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Oh man, it's a glorious day in the PNW. Look at that, it's so beautiful outside. <laughs> yes. Oh, hopefully this is finding you guys well. I am here with Trip, and I want to do this video for you. This is the video. Not an actual step-by-step, -step, but at least it's going to be quite informative. I will try to keep it short and uh, not brief, but short uh, on the details on what I did on trip and the mounts I put on here. Uh, I did a video a while back this summer. Uh, I did a walkthrough on trip with the rooftop tent, the awning, the side steps, everything. I did it all. And just recently I did do a video talking about those right there. Yes, there's something missing. Trip is a little naked because I took the um, uh, fender flares off and that was on the video previous to this one. So you gotta go check that out real quick and you'll know why they're off. Uh, but today's video is, I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about the mounts, the track mounts, as well as the Rotopack mounts I did on my Nissan Titan here. Um, I had several of you guys asking me, sending me messages or emails and DMing me and stuff like that. So I thought I would do it. I did take the opportunity to uh, video a lot of the footage and the steps previously in the summer of 2020. It is coming, uh, it's about middle the end of February right now and 2021. So I thought I'd go ahead and just do a little video and recap what I did, talk to you about the parts and components, how I did it, throw that video in here as well, and uh, hopefully it will help you. Now there's a caveat with all this. The caveat to this is I have only done this on two Lear canopies, and the Lear canopies with these specific windows and this style and design. I say that because there's Snug Top, there's ARE, there's Century, uh, there's Lear, there's a lot of other canopies out there, and there's different canopy styles and setups. Uh, trips windows are different than other vehicles windows because those windows uh, will actually encompass the entire side of your canopy uh, Some guys don't have windows. They have doors. Well, if you have a door on the side of your canopy uh, This isn't gonna work for you guys uh, Well, I should say I shouldn't say that it probably would work for you But you're not gonna need the track system that I'm gonna be showing you all uh, But you could probably use some of the other mounting components that I'll be sh uh, showcasing here So that might be an option uh, the other thing is too is um, Trip his canopy as well as the other canopy I did the it's a rail cover which means the canopy itself drops down past the top rails of the truck. Uh, sometimes if you get it what you'll see is you'd actually see the bed liner or the like the top of the rail like the black if you had bed liner or something like that you would see about maybe a half inch uh, right here and you would see the black from your truck. This one it covers that a little bit so it, it, it kind of drops down. I forgot the term they used for that. Lear does it, ARE does it, uh, I think Century does it too. Snug Top definitely does it, but um, my truck has this, and that's one of those little uh, 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 pucker effect moments that you have to learn and try to figure it all out, but we'll get started in that in a second. So uh, let me set you guys down here real quick, and we'll talk about the Tread Pro section first. Whew. Okay, oh, it's a bit brisk here, guys, in the PMW. It's probably like 38, 40 degrees right now, but it's a beautiful morning. Uh, I got a cheat sheet here because I went back and I, I took some notes and I had to write down some of the items that I will be talking about here on the channel. Let me get you a little bit out of the sun and uh, get you guys sorted out here. So, uh, first and foremost, let's talk about these. These are the ARB Tread Pros. I mentioned them in previous, uh, previous videos. I have four of them on here. Uh, I like these a lot more. They're a lot more rigid uh, than the Max Tracks and some other brands. Also, uh, ARB ended up coming up with a uh, patented design with them where the materials for the lugs are a different material than the tread board itself and how they design and build it all. You'll have to go do some YouTube searching and stuff like that to see exactly how all these things are made and decide what you want to do. Uh, I like these a lot. They weren't really much more money than the Max Tracks at the time. Uh, I've had these for about two years now, so uh, you can kind of go with that what you will. I know there's a lot more prices and differences from when I bought these to where you might be watching this video now uh, sometime in 2021 or 2022 or beyond in the future. And I cannot predict any of the prices or the access to materials, whether it's for Tread Pros, Roto Packs, or anything else. So I'll just say that right now. Uh, Tread Pros are about two years old. The Roto Packs I'll be showing you are about a year old. Uh, so go with that, deal with it. You'll have to do your research. 
with that being said, okay, the tread pros. What I ended up doing first and foremost is uh, I had to figure out the layout and, and how I was gonna mount these tread pros. The tread pros offer a whole bunch of different style holes all throughout the board itself. And I had to figure out what was the best way to mount them and make them secure. Uh, so what I did is I, I lined up the holes in relation to how I could bolt them and how they would lay out on the truck itself. Then I centered the uh, canopy window. Uh, because I wanted these to kind of cover the entire window and encompass it. I didn't want them too far back or too far forward, so I had to find center on my canopy and on the window. With that being said, painter's tape was my friend in all this. I was able to take painter's tape and apply painter's tape all throughout the truck on the outside to draw, mark, find center, and do everything else, mark where I was and drill my holes and everything. So I would definitely recommend the two inch wide or that 1.88 wide, as well as some maybe one inch wide painter's tape. It will definitely do you good in this process. Um, okay, the, uh, pro the materials that I started using, we'll start out with the actual mounting part portion itself. This is called L-Track and I got it through US Cargo Control. Uh, US Cargo, Cargo Control has its own website, but you can also buy it on, on Amazon. I will try to, re, to provide all the links down below to everything. I am an Amazon affiliate. I pretty much have given up on that because Amazon just pretty much stopped paying me because everything cool, everything that the cool kids want, you don't get paid for. All the stuff that's, that's crappy and is pretty much useless or won't last very long, I can get paid for it if I want to pedal it. I am not doing that. So if it's a link down below, it's an Amazon link or it's a direct link to that manufacturer's website, use the link, don't use the link, use it on your own. Maybe I'll make five cents, most likely I won't make anything. But I'm here making the video to help you all. I am not get being paid by anybody. The majority of all these items I bought, except for the roto packs themselves, I bought all the mounts, I bought all the brackets, I bought everything here. Uh, okay, so getting back to these, these are US cargo control mounts. They're six inches, they're made out of aluminum, and they're black anodized. Um, I bought the six inch ones because I really didn't think I needed to buy two foot or four foot ones because I was just gonna have a lot of track here that was gonna be pretty much useless. So knowing that I only needed about six inches, I went with that. The next thing was is the plate. Now the plates that the tracks on this side are mounted on as well as the roto pack side, this is four inch wide, quarter inch thick, and I bought 24 inch long pieces of aluminum. I went to my local fab, uh, uh, metal shop and they had aluminum, so I went ahead and I bought four pieces of that. Now I ended up measuring and cutting them to length, which was somewhere around, I think the 20 and a half or 21 inch. Again, I don't wanna give you a specific measurement because you are gonna have to measure it and figure that out yourself, depending on the canopy you have, the size and everything else. But I cut, I had these cut for me. So when I went there, I called and I ordered a quarter inch by four inch by 24 inch pieces of aluminum. They cut me four of them and then I brought them back here. Okay, to mount the, tr the backboard onto, uh, or the mounting plate as we'll call it, to put the mounting plate onto the canopy, I had to use some type of bolting system. What's really cool about the uh, US cargo control system is they already have these things called double lug nuts. It's a threaded lug nut. It's basically a little threaded portion with these two little ears on either side of it. And those ears actually drop down into this track system and slide over. And then when you tighten down the uh, nylock nut, um, you tighten it down, it locks it into place. It's a really cool, really secure system. And I am super happy with it. Uh, so with those three components right there, I have my six inch L-Track, I have my backing plate, and I have my double, uh, uh, my threaded double lug nuts right there, L-Track lug nuts. Um, you're ready to start rocking and rolling. Now, the one part that's gonna get a lot of people in trouble is you're not gonna probably have a 10 ton press like myself. The reason why I mention that is because the canopy isn't flat. When you put this up and you get these mounted, the canopy is not flat like this. It's got an arch to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll go with that one first. It has an arch. So what I ended up doing is after I mounted the L-Track, which was definitely a precarious situation, uh, there was so much tape and measuring uh, and, and more tape and more measuring and marks to make sure everything was perfect because I had to drill into the canopy of my truck. And that is quite the pucker effect. I was, I was really, really, um, I was having a hard time to do that first one. But once I drilled that first hole, then it was all go. You know, I, it was, hey, <laughs> hey, you're ready to rock and roll, man. You drill that first hole after that, you're like, okay, well, I'm here. I'm in for a penny and for a pound. I went with it. 
Uh, but once those first holes were made, I felt a lot better about the situation. Uh, again, using my L-Track uh, to make sure I knew exactly where to drill. Uh, to mount the L-Track, I'll jump on that real quick, is that mount the L-Track, what I ended up using is, again, through US cargo control, uh, they're called airline style track fasteners. And what it is, it's basically like an inch and a half long um, uh, stainless steel uh, bolt and they come with washers and they come with regular nuts and it's all stainless steel. Well, I drilled the holes uh, just a hair smaller than the diameter of those. And I think they're about a quarter inch in diameter. And so I, I found the drill bit. I think if that's a crap, I forgot the measurement of that one, but you measured it, but I, I drilled it just a hair smaller uh, this way. So when the hole was drilled and I put the bolt through here, the bolt was actually kind of threading. It had something to grab. It had the fiberglass of the canopy to grab a hold of. Um, so I did that. But what I ended up doing is I actually upgraded, uh, in, instead of the uh, regular nuts they came with, I bought nylock, I bought stainless steel nylock uh, nuts for those. So all four, you know, these two down here and those up there are all bolted in with a stainless steel nylock nut. So that would help there. Um, so what I ended up doing is I had to put these on. I drilled all these holes first and I mounted the, the L-Track on here. After that, I had to come and take the aluminum plate and the, the, the backing plate here. I had to put the aluminum backing plate on and kind of use a red Sharpie and I marked where the angle started to change. I took it down to the shop and I used a solid half inch rod of steel and I actually was able to use that rod and my five ton press and press the aluminum to give it that curve. Now again, I overpressed because when you overpress metal, even the aluminum, when you go to overpress it, when you release the pressure, it kind of snaps back a little bit. So it took a little figuring that out, but we did it. And once this one was done, I was basically able to take the same one, go over here, hold it, and pretty much they were the same angle. So then I took this one, I brought down to the shop, I bent the second one, matched them up, and I was ready to rock and roll. Okay, one of the other things uh, the touch on was is not just the angle, but then also drilling the holes. I drilled the holes in the backing plates. Um, I think these were about five eighths of an inch in diameter or half inch because they're, the bolts are three eighths. These lugs are three eighths in diameter. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up going, I think, half inch holes. Because this way, when you put it on, it was a little tough to, after you had the angle and everything sorted, it was a little tough to get them perfectly with a 3 8 hole. And I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So I actually made the holes bigger and I was able to apply it onto the, the backing plate, onto the track system. And that worked out great there. What's nice about these double uh, uh, lug nuts right here, the threaded double lug nut, um, it already has like this washer that's built in that helps lock in the system. Uh, and I didn't do any washers on the outside of this one because it wasn't necessary. Once you put these nylocks in and you tighten it down, with aluminum being a softer metal, it really grabs. And I'm gonna say that with confidence because these have been mounted for uh, almost a full year now. And I did the Coyote, where that little trip that I met up with Coyote Works and, and everybody else. I did a trip with this. I did a, I just got back recently from a 2,400 mile trip on the highway most of the time with these mounted. I drove all the way down to Wyoming and back at the end of January and 1st of February. Drove down to Wyoming, drove back again, drove through all the snowstorms and the wind and everything else, and these things have held up great. Uh, they're super durable and they're really, really strong. Um, with that being said, uh, what we ended up doing is after we drilled the holes, and I say we because I did enlist Ben in part of this process, once we drilled these holes, uh, I went back and I got a little half inch, it was like half inch or maybe three quarter inch wide by eighth inch uh, piece of aluminum. And um, what I did is it was like 24 inches. I got it at, uh, I think Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. And I marked and I drilled the holes and we actually put that on the inside of the canopy. I used it as a backing plate. So instead of just washers, we used that entire plate to put over both of these bolts going in there. So the bolts come out, this one plate goes over it. And before we put that plate on and screwed them in, I actually bought butyl caulk, basically automotive uh, waterproof butyl caulk. It comes in a little squeeze tube, it's black. Uh, we went and squeezed it in the holes of each one of these with the bolts, put a whole bunch in there. We took that plate, we pressed the plate on there. Then we took the stainless steel uh, washers, pan head washers that came with these um, airline fasteners, we put those over it and then I used the stainless steel nylocks and secured these down. So these bolts going through here and the plate actually have a plate behind it inside the canopy, pressed in there and squeezed and then there's butyl caulk inside there. 
awesome. Really, really good to waterproof. But before we actually ended up putting these on, I actually bought a, a 3M tape. It's about an inch wide. I bought a spool of it. I don't know where I got it, if I got it at my local auto parts store, if it was an Amazon purchase, but it's an inch wide. The spool is probably like 10 or 15 yards long. And I just cut it, uh, and we just cut it to the length of six inches on this, and it's two-sided, so you could take it off, and we applied it on here. So actually, underneath this track that you see right here, there's actually uh, the 3M tape, the automotive weatherproof tape. So that's pushed on. So we did everything possible that we could to make sure that nothing would leak, there would be no violations inside this, and to make sure it was super strong to hold everything that was going on. Now, one of the other things I wanna to touch on is, is you guys are seeing these knobs right here. Cargo Equipment Corporation, which I think is part of US Cargo Control is where I got them, but I got them off of Amazon. And what they do is they come with the actual threaded double lug uh, that you see, but this knob can screws on that. And the reason why I did that is, is I needed more of those double lugs, of course, to mount this on here, but I wanted these handles. And the reason I wanted these handles is I actually ended up creating it to where um, I bought some all thread. And all thread is basically a long piece of steel that's threaded rod. It doesn't have a nut head or a, a uh, uh, any type of head on either end. It's just one big long piece of threaded rod. And I cut them to length, and I think all one of every one of these is about six inches in length. And I say that because um, I what I did with them next to keep this from rattling and and, and coming you know undone or to not be so secure. What I ended up doing is I bought four of these knobs, and in cutting the all thread, what I had planned is take this off. So again, just the knobs like this. I have the all thread coming out like that. And the all thread goes all the way down, and on the plate, I actually have um, a nylock nut, I have a pan head, I have the all thread, then I have the aluminum plate, then I have another pan head washer, uh, and then another nylock. So it's basically this threaded rod is bolted to this back plate. Then it sticks out like this, and it comes through the holes that are already uh, pre designed in the ARB Tread Pro. Then I went ahead and I bought some radiator hose or what's called automotive hose. And uh, maybe it's for radiators and stuff like that, but it actually, it's the uh, really thick, it's like an eighth inch thick or a little bit thicker. And it has the, uh, uh, the, you know, the thread inside it and everything that you're familiar with. And I cut it to a certain length that would go over the rod, this threaded rod like that. Then I put a pan head washer on it. And what that does is it pushes the pan head washer and the rubber onto the tread pro. Then I use this nut, and in, in, in tightening this nut down, I have the pan head washer that allows the, the, the steel of this to hit the steel of that and tighten down. But it creates pressure because also on the plate, I have pieces of rubber hose, both on the back of this as well as on this right here. So when I tighten this down, the tread pros are actually being squeezed between two pieces of that automotive hose. And it's, it's working out really, really well. Um, uh, there was a reason why I didn't initially want to do the video and talk about this because it's like, well, you know, I wanted to put some time in to show you guys what it was that, you know, how these all worked and what was happening with it. Ooh. Uh, so, again, you just got to make sure it's all clean. Again, I have not cleaned these since um, I installed them. I'm just trying to get it so I don't, I don't, oh, you know, cross thread it. But you see, it goes on nice and tight like this, it secures down, and it's tight. I mean, you push down on it and it's tight until it won't turn anymore. That means the all thread is all the way in the entire portion of this handle. Uh, what's really nice is this plastic over molded handle. It's really, really well designed and well built. It's a very heavy duty product. Again, used for commercial applications. It's holding up well. And this does not back off because there's rubber, the rubber on both sides uh, creates so much pressure outwards that when you apply this down, these don't come loose. These are all nice and tight right here. And I haven't adjusted them since I got back from Wyoming. Now to secure it, I just use a basic uh, bike cable right here. I went ahead and did that. I ran the cable through here. The cable actually goes around this back plate. There's enough room between the glass of my truck, my canopy here, and the uh, back plate right here. There's about an inch. So I just run the cable through there, do that, and then I run it through the pre-existing holes on the ARB Tread Pro and lock it, and I keep the little key thingy with me with the other keys that are for the roto packs on that side. Now, the last thing I wanna show you real quick before we jump over that side is the strength and the stability of it. Uh, basically what it boils down to is, is 
you can use them to hang on. I mean, you get that, you get in a tire. What was great about having these then too is when we had the rooftop tent on there, which I still have the tent, it's just off because we're not using it this winter. We had so many other things going on. And I did that trip all the way down to Wyoming that I didn't want that and the winds and everything whipping it around and stuff like that. But because we had such bad weather, we were going out there and coming back. I wanted to make sure that I had some recovery boards as well as fuel in case we ended up with an issue. But strength wise, this is it. As you see guys, I could pull on it. I'm hanging on like this. It's all good. It is super dur durable. You grab this, I can shake all of trip. There's no problems with it, how it's mounted or anything. I'm happy with it. And that's why I wanted to finally share it with you all because I've actually put so many miles underneath this, so many different types of weather conditions and I've used them. And I was like, I'm confident in this and I wanted to share it with you. Matter of fact, I'm so confident with it that uh, you guys remember Greg. Greg came out, he has his Toyota Tacoma. And uh, he had a Toyota Tacoma, he has the same Lear canopy, but of course it's smaller. And he doesn't have the, uh, car the carpet lining and stuff like that in his, like I do in mine. But we went ahead and we did this to his truck. So he actually has his ARB Tread Pros mounted to the, the passenger side. And he has some uh, 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 air, the roto packs on the driver's side. Speaking of that, let's get over on the driver's side and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now we're on the driver's side. And the reason why um, I put the fuel tanks on the driver's side is pretty, I'd hope, self-explanatory. It's the fact that the fuel fills right here, right? That's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to have the, the, the roto packs on the same side the fuel was at. I didn't have to want to walk around from one side or the other. So basically, that's why I did that. Now, if you guys want to do it differently, that's great. That's up to you. If you want to do the one big fuel can, you could do the four gallon one. Now the roto packs here on this side are pretty much installed the same way as the other sides was. Uh, they still have the same L-Track, the six inch L-Track by US Cargo Control. They have the double lug nuts here. Um, and I did the same thing on the inside of the, this side as I did on the passenger side, meaning the uh, airline fasteners, the 3M tape, the, the butyl caulk, and the uh, three quarter inch wide plate with the holes and the stainless steel fasteners, all that kind of stuff. Everything on that side is the same as this side. The difference being is I didn't need the all thread over here because the roto packs actually have uh, T-handle systems and mounting systems. Now the systems that you can get with roto packs, uh, they're called, uh, let's see here, we got, uh, I use the roto packs RX DLX mounts. Uh, it's actually a backing plate with a T-handle on it. It all comes together, it even comes with some bolts. And that's what I used to mount the roto packs on here. But I went one step further and I wanted to get the ones that lock. At the time of making this system, I could not get the uh, mount, the entire bracket and the mount with a locking T-handle. I actually had to buy them separately. And that kind of sucked for me because of the fact that I had to pay more money. I had to pay about $35 each, so like 70 bucks more to buy the locking handle separately from the actual mount. Maybe you'll have better luck when you see this video and you come up with a, you know, a design that works for you. Maybe you'll be able to find the mount with the locking portion already, but I had to buy the two different handle system. The fuel tanks, I went with three gallon. Um, I was concerned at first about the weight and we're going on because that I think it's like six pounds a gallon. I was kind of concerned about that. But uh, in looking at what the Roto uh, the uh, Tread Pros weighed and what this was going to weigh and this system, I was pretty confident in being able to go with a three-gallon system. They do have two-gallon cans, and you can do if you want. Uh, and the one reason would be is the, the two-gallon cans are actually a little bit narrower. Okay, they are lighter. You have a gallon less, but they're also a little narrower, so they don't stick as far off your truck as this would off of mine. Uh, but I was pretty confident in that a three-gallon would work, and I... I took the gamble, and it, but it did pay off. It worked really well. Uh, I've been super excited about all these. The other reason why um, I went with the four inch mounting plates uh, was because of the fuel system. I was thinking about going to about a two or a three inch because I was thinking at first for the A or B Tread Pros. But then when I got to thinking about the fuel part, I was like, well, it's probably better to have a wider system. And I didn't want to go through a full six inches wide uh, so I, I just went with four. Again, it was another little gas to gamble. I had no experience in any of this. There was nothing at all to, to refer back to, like another video in this. At the making of this video, this is the only video or the only system I've seen done like this. Um, many people have them. They're on um, 
bed racks and stuff like that, the whole bed rail system that they have, but nothing on a canopy. There's been nothing designed like this. So it, it was kind of neat, but I was kind of going out on a limb for a lot of stuff. Now, uh, touching on the Rotopack systems, the other reason why I went to a three gallon double can instead of that long four gallon one was I really was gonna have, I, I, I was kind of thinking ahead and I thought I was gonna really have a hard time trying to line up the mounting systems on the four gallon can. The four gallon can's one big long piece and there's a mounting like this, there's a hole on this side and a hole on this side. And I was really having a hard time um, with confidence. I thought I was gonna have a hard time mounting uh, the, the bracket system on here and on here and have them line up properly so I could take the can on and off, if that makes sense. It was a lot easier for me just to line up this mount on this backing plate so make the holes, drill it all, you know, do all that stuff, put it on here and have it equal. Now the OCD in me, uh, and Greg can attest to this, the OCD in both of us, uh, these cans actually, if you see, they're level with each other. And that was not easy to do. That was not easy to do at all. What I mean by that is I did not want to have the bottom of this can uh, higher or lower than the bottom of that can. I didn't want to deal with that. So I wanted to make sure these cans were level. That was super hard. But what I ended up doing is I ended up centering the mount in the bracket on this, marked it, drilled the holes and everything. I was really happy with that one. So when this was hung up, I was able to mark the length, go on, draw a line across here, mark the length, lay this all out properly, and then make my holes. Um, and that was it, uh, it was really cool. Now the mounting brackets, they already came with uh, nuts and bolts. So I was able just to go ahead with using their product. It worked out just fine. Um, I don't remember if they came with nylock nuts, but um, I think they did, but everything was nylock nutted on here. So these, these uh, uh, double lug nuts, these are actually nylock nuts. The, the threaded double lug, these are nylock nuts. The all thread that's on the back, that's all uh, um, the uh, nylock nuts and the mounting system itself was nylock nut. So again, nothing to back off. I used pan head washers, I did everything. It was really super cool. Uh, the reason why they're black, the backing plates, I don't think I mentioned that. Um, I basically just cleaned them all off, sanded them down a little bit, and I used a bed spray liner. Uh, Greg went and bought um, an actual paint for aluminum, and uh, neither one of our, our backing plates retains the paint. The aluminum doesn't hold the paint very well uh, when it gets abused and, and, and dinged and scratched and everything like that, like we've been putting our trucks through. Uh, but it is what it is. I wasn't really all that concerned with the aesthetics as much when it came to the paint, because as you guys know, Tripp's been through a lot. There was a lot of pinstriping. And as you guys saw in the previous video with the fender flares and what happened there, I, I'm really way over having scratches or dinks or anything on him at this point. <laughs> So with that being said, I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, I used a bed liner for those, like I mentioned. Uh, it works fine. Uh, you can see the wear and the scratches and stuff like that, but again, I wasn't concerned about it. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep all the information that of all the components and parts that I have on here. I'll put it down below in the description box, so just watch this. If you're on your mobile device, just click the little like arrow or something in comments. You're gonna see something in there. You're gonna see all the information. Uh, just scroll past all the people that have been supporting the channel and everything um, and go through that and then you'll see a whole list of everything that I have on here. Most of it will probably be an Amazon affiliate link of some sorts, but I'll also try to put on uh, the actual companies like Rotopax or anything. Um, a shout out first off um, to uh, offroadtents.com. Offroadtents.com, they actually, uh, I got connected with them through Gowana Equipment, who you know sponsors uh, me at the rooftop tent and everything. Kind of, kind of became an unofficial brand ambassador for Gowana Equipment. Uh, Offroadtents.com actually gave me uh, these fuel cans as well as another set of fuel cans that I did a giveaway on a while back. Uh, so big shout out to Offroadtents.com. So I would have to say if you guys are shopping and you want to do something like this, look up their, go on their website. Uh, their website link is down below, uh, like all the other videos it's been. Look up there, see what they have in stock. Now, if they don't have something, now again, I, I say this because I had the experience. I had to get all my parts and components from like four different, five different suppliers. Um, 
Also check out uh, Lolo Overland. Josh has the newest versions of those at Lolo Overland. So if you don't see it over on offroadtents.com, head over to Josh's website at uh, Lolo, o Lolo 4WD, I believe it was, um, and check it out and see what he has there. You might be able to find gas cans at offroadtents.com, but you might be able to get the mounting brackets and the locking T-handles over by Josh. And I say that because after I bought my locking T-handles and I do everything, I went down to Josh to visit when I was down there with Greg and he had just gotten some in, but mine were already bought and installed. So there was nothing I could do about it. So Josh, I know had them at the time when I made this, so he might be able to get them again. Greg's Tacoma, he has the three gallons as well on his truck. Works out great there. Uh, oh, and another thing I know you guys are gonna be asking about. I know you, a lot of you guys are gonna be concerned about when I mentioned how these stick off the back of the truck. Well they don't stick out any further than my mirrors do. As you're gonna see, my mirrors actually, they're, they're already pushed in. These are telescoping mirrors, telescoping mirrors. They pull out because they're trailer mirrors, uh, but they don't stick out any further than. So that being said, gang, hopefully this video is gonna edit okay. Uh, I am getting really cold out here. It's freezing right now. It was nice at the beginning of this video, but boy, standing out in the shade and 38 degrees, it's a little chilly, a little chilly. But again, hopefully this video is gonna find you well. Hopefully this is gonna be very helpful. Leave all your comments down below, questions, stuff like that. You know how to reach out to me at cknifeandtool.com. That is probably the best way to start a conversation is through an email. You can find me over on Instagram too and just send me a direct message there as well. Uh, also, don't forget to hit up Ground Pounder Coffee. If you guys haven't seen that yet, and Jim and I over at Ground Pounder Coffee have created a new blend. Uh, my wife and my buddy Greg, of all people, was had some input in it. And so the four of us came together and we have a CK knife and tool blend of coffee. Awesome bag, Jim did a great design, a uh, great way, or he did a great thing by helping me design the bag. How are we gonna put that? But Jim, you did awesome, I appreciate it. So go check out groundpoundercoffee.com, grab yourself a bag of coffee or two or 10. I don't mind if you have a caffeine addiction, it's okay. You can get a bean and you can get it already pre-ground. It's like a 12 or 14 ounce bag. Check it out, it's got an awesome label on there. Oh, it's a perfect label, I think you're gonna enjoy it. But again guys, big shout out to all my Nissan people. Thank you very much for all the love and support. Hopefully this is gonna find uh, uh, a home. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Not by Ben. <laughs> I got distracted. Dutch was doing some stuff behind me and I was like, thank you, don't park, don't park. Hopefully my Nissan guys are going to have uh, a good time trying to do this, figuring it all out. If you got any questions, please let me know. Um, other than that, guys, thank you for all the support. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. I'm done. I'm freezing. That's why I'm losing my train of thought. You guys take it easy. Bye.